Hi, hello, thank you for being here and attending my presentation. I'm Henk Vogel, I'm from the Netherlands. I'm a PhD researcher at the Protest Protestant Theological University in Amsterdam. Megala Klomp and Marcel Barnett are my supervisors. My research concerns the ritual musical appropriation of psalms in contemporary Dutch and Flemish culture. That is, the meaning of psalms were performed beyond the domain of religious ritual or liturgy in a post-secular society. And I studied four cases of performed psalms and let me start by introducing them. The first one is 150 Psalms, a two-day festival in the concert hall of Utrecht in the Netherlands. Later, this project travels to Brussels, New York and Adelaide, Australia. In the festival, four world-renowned a cappella choirs performed all 150 Psalms in 12 concerts. These were thematic concerts with themes like thankfulness, oppression, suffering, migration and feast introduced by a literary author, offering a speech with reflections on the Psalms and the concert theme. And there were lectures by Michael Ignacev and Tom Holland, providing more elaborate backgrounds and reflections. In the corridors, there were inflatable installations confronting festival goers with thought provoking questions from and inspired by the Psalm texts and a photo exhibition illustrating the concert themes. For this festival setup, the organizers found inspiration in the monastic lit liturgy of the hours with its repeated rhythm of reciting all psalms in the course of one or two or three weeks. They intensified this practice in a one-time event of two days. Second case is Psalm 151 of composer Boudewijn Tarenskeen. Tarenskeen invited eight renowned authors who are known for publicly reflecting on their personal religiosity and spirituality and on the role of religion in society. He asked them to write new psalm texts, which he put together in his new 80-minute composition. Seven professional singers of Capella Amsterdam formed the piece in churches and concert halls with pipe organ accompaniment or with accordions at the venues without the pipe organ. Tarenskane emphasized that he tried to find new language, new sound, new music to fill our spiritual reservoir. The third case is Poesia Divina, a series of poetry recitals within annual music festival Musica Divina. For five years, Poets wrote new psalms and recited those in monasteries, churches, public libraries and theatres. In the words of the festival organization, singing their prayers in these temples of silence and contemplation." End quote. And finally, we have the case of Gene Murder Bovenstem. It is a practice in conservative or strict reformed Calvinist congregations in and around the Dutch town of Genemuyde. These congregations sing Genevan psalms at rather slow pace with organ accompaniment. Male groups sing a descant above the psalm tune sung by the congregation, especially during the more exultant verses. There are male choirs specialized in Genemuyde Bovenstem, performing this type of psalmody in special Genemuyde Bovenstem events sing-along concerts in large monumental churches with organists specialized in this style of music. The practice is also accredited as intangible cultural heritage by the Dutch government, which comes with financial and practical support to preserve the practice. I, as you can see here, I observed performances I interviewed all sorts of participants in the events. I gathered textual materials from websites, program booklets, reviews and interviews from newspapers. I coded and analyzed all these texts and transcripts. In my 
research appropriation is a central notion. I use the definition of, among others, historian Willem Vrijhoff. He defines appropriation as the meaning-making process by which groups or individuals attribute new meanings to external bearers of meaning, so that these bearers of meaning become acceptable, livable, bearable, or dignified. So the notion of appropriation implies some sort of recontextualization or migration of a cultural bearer of meaning, gaining new meanings. As you see here, there is an emphasis on the construction of meaning by the people involved. They take the psalms, perform them, interpret them, attach all kinds of meanings to them. It would seem as if the psalms patiently and passively endure this whole operation. But of course, the psalms come with an enormous history of interpretations, performances and canonizations. They cannot be seen apart from it. If we imagine appropriation as taking a lump of clay from the ground and molding it, we must agree that this lump of clay comes with its particular specifics, its wetness, its specific stiffness, the little fossils and stones molding the potter's fingers instead of the other way around. And approaching my pro the end of my project, I try to um, approach appropriation as a mutual process and to emphasize how the tradition of Psalms challenges, enables, limits, manipulates the meaning-making process and re-signifies the groups and individuals who work with them and their contexts, leaving traces on them, so to speak. Here I work with the hermeneutics of Paul Ricoeur, further developed by social linguist Alan Bell and philosopher Michel Fussell. Ricoeur argues that texts unfold a broad but not unlimited field of possible meanings, although these are not stable, singular or universal. For Ricoeur, different and contrary interpretations are possible, although some are more plausible than others. Meaning making takes place in an interaction between text and reader, who are both subjects. Fussell describes that a text creates a world, invites an audience, prepares an event, but also needs to be opened, to be read, to be given voice, hence a mutual interaction. Now, if not anything goes, what limited field of possible meanings do the Psalms open up? What is Psalm specific in the performances that I study? How are they different from, say, requiems, passions, even songs performed beyond the ecclesial domain? Or in other words, how does the Psalter as received in Christian history challenge the ritual musical appropriation of Psalms in a post-secular context. The Psalter as received in Christian history, that is a broad issue. Reviewing scholarly literature on the textual and poetic specifics, reception and performance histories, theological and literary interpretations, it appeared indeed impossible to formulate a center or common future of the entire Psalter. However, I was able to list some family resemblances a series of overlapping similarities. First, the age and origins. If we can even speak about origins of Psalms, they are obscure. They contain traces of different older traditions surrounding the people of Israel and their place in ritual and devotion is often not clear. In liturgies of temple and synagogue and later in many Christian liturgies, the Psalms had a prominent place. Many Psalm texts are addressed to God, a God who appears faithful, loving, angry, redeeming, absent, etc. As different scholars emphasize, the God in the Psalms is an ambiguous figure. Many Psalm texts are written from the viewpoint of an individual, an individ individual lyrical subject. Psalms show a wide emotional 
diversity and layeredness. And many psalms show a dynamic of displacement and coming home, of exile and oppression and redemption. Often these moments merge and overlap. Memories, hopes and current states intermingle and it cannot always be distinguished how time and sequentiality are to be interpreted. Many psalms distinguish the righteous from the wicked. Many psalms address injustice, oppression and abuse of power. Many psalms show a language that's very physical, imbued with corporeal metaphors. And stylistically, many psalms are characterized by repetition, parallelisms, refrains, and they all suggest collective performance. And indeed, psalms have been performed collectively in the ritual context of temple, synagogue, church, monastery, and on the street and in the fields. In Judaism and Christianity, the Psalms are among the most read, most cited, most recited parts of scripture. And with this place in scripture and tradition, they come with authority. In the context of the Netherlands, singing Psalms is often associated with Protestantism, Calvinism, the Reformed tradition, and is thus also connected to narratives or mythologies of a collective religious past. Calvinism is still a strong symbol in dominant national imaginations. Well, how do these characteristics of Psalms as received through Christian and local histories challenge the ritual musical appropriations that I study? I describe the Netherlands and Flanders as a post-secular context, a context where religion and secularity are not necessarily opposed or strictly divided. The domains intermingle in new constellations. Aesthetically, for example, in the, in the realms of the arts and heritage, individuals and groups play and experiment with practices, objects, experiences, styles associated with these formerly more enclosed religious and secular domains. I think that in such a context, the Psalter, as received through Christian and local histories, challenges, enables and limits the appropriation in a specific way. I'm still in the phase of analyze, analyzing my data, but let me share some first thoughts. The Psalter makes room for, or invites, to address God. In Psalm 151 and Poesia Divina, poets find themselves challenged to address God or to reflect on what addressing God means to them. They try to find names for God, switch between different names, avoid naming the divine and deconstruct traditional images of God. Their God is perhaps as elusive and ambiguous as the God in the Psalter being present and distant at once, raising more questions than answers. In a post-secular context, the struggle of the psalmists trying to approach God is perhaps liberating or recognizable at least. And the Psalter invites to play with the dynamics between the lyrical subject on the one hand, the I, from which many psalm texts are written, and performing collectives on the other hand, Psalms come with a tradition of theological reflection on how to identify as individuals, as collectives, with the individuals and groups in the texts, whether these are David, the people of Israel, temple musicians, or in messianic interpretations, Christ. In all four cases in my research, I see experiments with collectively performing psalms. Think of singing along, moving collectively along, in many cases, inspiration is drawn from collective aspects of psalmody in liturgical ritual. Organizers ask, if these psalms have been sung by congregations, how are we to form a collective during this festival or concert? At the same time, the highly individual tone of, this, of the psalms leave room for individual 
identification and meaning making, which is an important value in Dutch and Flemish societies. The Psalter also invites to give words and sounds to all kinds of emotions, including what may be considered indecent and inappropriate, especially in Psalm 151 and Poesia Divina, this invitation was accepted. Some of the new texts are joyful, some vulgar, some fearful, some doubtful, some angry. The Psalter invites to address injustice and oppression and gives gravity with its canonical authority. In Festival 150 Psalms, for example, the suffering of migrants is addressed in the speeches and photo exhibitions. The Psalms' embeddedness in religious and cultural heritage gives relevance and authority to such calls to justice. With its place in Christianity, the Psalter provides substance to moral pleas. With its ancient and also obscure roots, the Psalter is flexible to be appropriated as pre-religious heritage or universal heritage for humankind, and also as multi-religious heterodox heritage by its place in different religious traditions. Thus, the Psalms fit to a more eclectic spirituality. In all four cases, such aspects of the Psalter are recognized and celebrated. In 150 Psalms, Psalm 151 and Poesia Divina, organizers emphatically tried to find poets, speakers and performers with different religious and secular backgrounds. They emphasized that non-secular tradition could and should claim the Psalms for their own. Also in Genemuide Bovenstem, which is the closest to liturgical practice, the universality of the text and of the musical beauty is emphasized by participants. The Psalms will speak to you, whatever you believe or don't believe, so the message goes. In the Netherlands, more so than in Flanders, Psalms and performing Psalms carries symbolic meaning in national imagination. This invites artists to reflect on and also to deconstruct such narratives. Poet Ramzi Nasser does so as a speaker in 150 Psalms and as a writer of a text for Psalm 151. Psalms challenge him to reflect on his Palestinian roots, his role as poet laureate of the Netherlands national poet, the place of Calvinism in Dutch history and how much room there is or there is not for diversity in nat national imaginations. Let me now take this one final step further. In Ricoeur's thinking, the notion of appropriation means something different, something more. It means positioning oneself in relation to a text after having been open as a reader and having obeyed the directions provided by the text. The interaction between text and reader results in a changed meaning of both. The interaction results in a changed view on self, on the world, and on how one can act in this world. The text has transformative power. How are the Psalms asserting their transformative power in the appropriation? Let me conclude with some final thoughts about the transformative potentials of the Psalms. The Psalms can open up and liberate from two rigid or one-sided images of the divine. The Psalms can enhance compassion by giving room to the voices of those who are suffering, of the thankful, of the displaced, sometimes all at once. The Psalms call to action in situations of injustice. They also remember to letting things over to the hands of God when they cannot be solved. The Psalms inspire to be thankful for the goodness of life. The Psalms offer a space for interreligious and ecumenical dialogue. And the Psalms inspire to hope for better futures. They provide visions of peace and justice. Are these potentials recognized and utilized in the study performances and how? This is a broad question and I invite you to help me narrowing it down. 
I want to explore the, the transformative power of the Psalms, their power to re-signify the individuals and groups working with, with them as manifest in contemporary performances beyond liturgy. The ways in which the Psalter does and does not assert its power in the ritual musical appropriation of Psalms tells something of the meaning of religious practice in post-secular society and of the Psalms intention to live on, appropriating those who perform them along the way. I thank you for watching and listening, and I'm looking forward to our conversation in the conference. I hope to see you there.